Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Croydon Constitutionalist Pubcast. I'm Mike Swaddling and I'm here with my co-host Dan Heaton. Uh, Dan, uh, where are we and uh, what are we drinking? Uh, well, actually, I'm drinking some sort of uh, forest fruit squash, I think, at the moment, because this is a podcast, but this is actually a virtual podcast uh, for two reasons. One, uh, as we record this, we've actually got our um, monthly uh, third Wednesday drinks uh, tomorrow. Uh, so we, uh, we, we're we very respectable people. We, won't, we don't drink uh, every day. And secondly, this is off the, uh, the back of the unfortunate news of the recent closure of uh, one of our, our major haunts, uh, both of the Croydon Constitutionalists and prior to that, the, uh, the Croydon Leave campaign, uh, the Skylark pub in, uh, in South End in, in Croydon. Uh, a sad day for all when that closed, Mike. It was very, very much a sad day. Uh, fantastic pub for for us, but a fantastic pub for the area. Really supported an awful lot of business, I think, in in South Croydon. And we hope, um, well, I hope something comes along there pretty soon. Um, yeah. So what we're talking about today is the local elections in Croydon. So on May the fifth, uh, we have local elections for a new mayor and for uh, a new council. Um, first time we've elected a mayor, and obviously some of you will know I was involved in the Democ campaign to help bring about us having a democratically elected mayor. We've got eight candidates running for mayor. Um, if I go through them as they're, they're listed, I think in one of the books, but uh, I might be wrong, or alphabetically even. Uh, Richard Howard for the Liberal Democrats, Farrah London for taking the initiative party, Winston McKenzie, uh, for uh, as an independent, Gavin Palmer, another independent, Andrew Pelling, another independent, Jason Perry for the Conservatives, Val Shawcross for Labour, and Underwood for the Green Party. Dan, any thoughts on that list or uh, uh, just on the mayoral candidate uh, so far? Well, clearly you've got your your major parties represented. Uh, the two leading parties in Croydon, the Conservatives, have selected. Uh, the current uh, leader of the Conservative group on the council. Uh, so he's also standing uh, for re-election as a councillor, uh, if he doesn't actually get elected as mayor. Uh, whereas the Labour Party have selected a, a very competent person in Bal Shawcross, who, uh, who worked for uh, the mayor of, mayor of London in the past, and, um, and I believe was the leader of the uh, Croydon Labour Party or the Croydon uh, Labour contingent on the council uh, many moons ago. Um, when they uh, when they introduced Tramlink, I believe you were you attended a debate, Mike, where there was just the, the two of those candidates. Yeah, so uh, with a different hat on, I'm involved in the Causal and Pearly Debating Society. We had a debate, um, and I think the title was "It's Time for Croydon to Go Back to the Tories." Uh, debate titles are meant to be sort of provocative in, in that way. In that way, uh, Jason Perry proposed it, and Val Shawcross uh, op- opposed it. Both were very well argued. Jason won in the end, but it was a good showing for Val Shawcross uh, and Labour, and particularly in a part of town that's not not very Labour. Um, I think she argued her case very well. Um, I know, but but there's been a lot of hustings. There's really been an interest in this mayoral campaign. We've got more candidates. I mean, mentioned Winston McKenzie. Um, okay, uh, uh, an interesting character, but he is a well-known character around Croydon. He's he stood up to run. Farrah London had ran for taking the initiative party as a mayoral candidate of London. So now running again in Croydon. Gavin Palmer's a new independent candidate. We we know Gavin for a while, but but pretty new to most people in Croydon. Andrew Pelling is an old name in Croydon, um, uh, who's been an MP, a GLA member, and a councillor for both Conservatives and Labour. Um, but to attract him as an independent, I think, is quite interesting. So, so there's definitely been an interest. And I, I count something like eight debates or hustings have been held or will have been held by the end of this, which is pretty unprecedented. Dan, you were at the Democ debate. What did you make of that? Yeah, so the, the Democ hustings uh, were held at St Matthew's uh, Church. And uh, of the eight candidates that we've, we've talked about uh, thus far, uh, there were five that were actually invited along. Um, so you had uh, Andrew Pelling, uh, an independent. You had Val Shawcross for Labour, Jason Perry for the Conservatives. You had um, Richard Howard 
for the Lib Dems and you had Peter Underwood for the Greens. There was no uh, debate, as it were, in the sense of uh, as nobody won officially the hustings. But it was interesting to see the interactions and, and the way that they all sort of dealt with things differently. Uh, Val Shawcross, as I said, quite a competent person, but obviously on the back foot being the Labour Party candidate when it's been a Labour council that, that has been in charge when the, uh, when the actual council went bust. Certainly, she was said everything she possibly could to to distance herself from the previous regime. Um, the Conservative candidate, again, spoke well, answered the questions well, but realistically, he was just saying, you know, we'll be better than Labour, look what they've done. That, that was his basic um, argument, really. Um, the Lib Dem candidate, of course, someone that, you know, nobody is particularly aware of, or most people aren't particularly aware of, uh, ex-army chap, um, very much running, I felt, on his his own background in the army and then in investment banking and his, his own personal competence. And he, he sort of talked about that quite a lot, um, as much as he talked about any particular uh, Lib Dem policies. Uh, Peter Underwood for the Greens. Yes, of course, he, he talked about uh, environmental matters, uh, but he was talking a lot about um, having sort of local consultations and and, and basically, you know, yes, he'd be the mayor, but he, he wanted to hand power back to the local communities. Um, and, uh, and Andrew Pelling, obviously, he's been the, a Conservative Member of Parliament for, for Croydon Central and then uh, a late, later a Labour councillor in Wadden. Uh, and indeed, he is still standing again for Wadden, obviously, this time as, a, as an independent. Um, and uh, it, he was uh, he was pulling no punches, it's fair to say. Um, the outsider, perhaps, but uh, obviously been very much involved in in Croydon politics for a, for a very long time. Um, and he he was at various points he was mentioning the names of of senior uh, council employees that, frankly, he said if he was elected mayor he would sack. Um, he, he was probably uh, if anybody got the most applause uh, from the room, I'd say it was uh, it was him. He was. Um, uh, but of course, he, you know, what, what else is he going to do? He's, uh, he's, he's got no sort of uh, party affiliation officially anymore. Um, and he, uh, he has to make a bit of a, some, some rumbles there. And he, uh, he certainly wasn't, uh, wasn't holding back on the, uh, the Democ, uh, the Democ hustings. No, that's, uh, and that's, that's good to hear that there's some, someone willing to sort of make a stand, make a bit of a, bit of a noise and a rumble. I, I don't know about you, Dan. I fear it's a bit late for Andrew Pelling as an independent candidate. He's not campaigned perhaps as strongly as I suspected he might um, to, to really have a run at going for mayor. But it's it's good to see someone's trying to shake things up. Yeah, I mean, for, for any independent candidate in particular, because the referendum wasn't that long ago, you know, you didn't actually know that you could stand for mayor. And in the case of, of Andrew Pelling, he was still trying to be the uh, the Labour Party uh, council candidate for Wadden until very, very recently when he was officially turfed out of the uh, uh, the Labour Party, basically, uh, following all kinds of shenanigans uh, locally. So until he he that was that was absolutely certain, of course, he couldn't actually launch a campaign uh, officially. Uh, to be as an independent, to be to be the mayor. So, he, you know, he was in a, a difficult position there. Certainly, had he, have, you know, had a, a full year, let's say, to uh, to have a run at this, uh, I think he could do he could do better than perhaps, you know, he, he may end up doing. Yes, and, uh, that, that, that's true. And uh, so you mentioned how we think he might end up doing. Care to predict any uh, outcomes from this? Well... I think there will be an element of uh, perhaps Labour Party voters staying at home uh, rather than voting for anybody else. Um, I think there will probably be uh, some people who will vote uh, for uh, neither of the Conservatives and the Labour Party, at least with their first, their first vote, because of course you get, you get two votes in this, uh, in this particular system. So I can see the, um, the the sort of second tier of mainstream parties, if you like, doing okay at least in that first round, 
um, the Lib Dems and the Greens, for example. Uh, but I think, you know, Andrew Pelling has a name. He's, uh, uh, he's somewhat well known in Croydon. Uh, so he could do OK in that first round. As we know, it's a, it's a two stage uh, process with the votes. Um, my suspicion is that uh, that people may vote Green or for Andrew Pelling or Lib Dem, um, perhaps, it, you know, or, or indeed for, for uh, Winston McKenzie or, or Gavin Palmer in that first round. But ultimately, if they use their two votes, uh, I suspect it will go through to uh, a, a runoff between the Labour Party candidate and the Conservative Party candidate. And, and ultimately, one of those will probably uh, be the first directly elected mayor for Croydon. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, the, the, it will be good to see uh, an independent do well, but uh, there's not be enough campaigning. I'm not sure there's enough local media that allows people to campaign easily in the area. Um, it's it's likely to come down to the Conservatives and Labour. And, and uh, if I was to put money on it, I would say... Uh, Labour will probably win in the end. Uh, I think they have played very cleverly picking Val Shawcross uh, as a candidate, a uh, very capable lady, as, as you've, you've mentioned, and, and she's distanced herself from the current council quite, quite uh, cleverly. Now, whether she really is that distant, whether she'd be really that different is, is perhaps a different conversation. But, but as an electorally, uh, talking of the politics of it, I would think uh, that's that's probably a likely outcome. Of course, it's not just the mayoral candidates uh, being elected. There's a council to be elected in May. Um, 277 people are standing for council. Uh, they come from a large number of parties, uh, uh, nine in all, uh, which includes three as independents. Um, uh, across the whole borough, and there's 20 something uh, wards uh, across the borough. Playing second fiddle somewhat this time, but but still a big and important election. The council will still uh, have a lot of influence over planning, a lot of influence over the budget. Um, as you might expect, Conservative and Labour are both picking up a full slate of 70 councillors. And um, what's quite impressive is the Green Party, uh, uh, words you won't often hear me say, putting up 65 councillors. It's very hard to, to get people to stand, but 65 up is impressive. What's completely unimpressive and frankly slightly hilarious is the Lib Dems man managing a paltry 47. Uh, I'm sure they've run more in the past. Um, a pretty bad showing from the Lib Dems uh, in, in running quite a lot less than you would expect them to. Taking the initiative party, I've got 19, a uh, surprisingly high number for a, an independent, uh, a, a small party. Uh, three independents, uh, one of whom is Andrew Pelling running again in Wadden. And then um, two parties uh, that we know, UKIP, Kathleen Garner, is running again, uh, uh, the, their last sort of candidate to run in the borough at the moment. And the Heritage Party, Zach, uh, Zach Starling, uh, is running uh, in Selsden and Adam Village. We've done lots of work with Zach. Uh, we've interviewed him recently about this. So, um, Dan, any thoughts on the council races and uh, some of the candidates running? Well, I mean... It Firstly, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how these things work out because normally uh, the Conservative and the Labour Party only really put much effort in into those swing wards. Uh, so I don't know how they're going to cope when really they need to be spreading themselves out across the across the entire borough to try to pick up whatever votes they possibly can do for the mayoral election. So we may see a few surprises simply off the back of that. Um, but in terms of the, the overall picture, very interesting to see the number of candidates from this uh, relatively new party, the Taking the Initiative Party. Uh, mostly uh, the candidates are standing in the north of the borough. Um, the Green Party have been, uh, as you say, they've got lots of candidates across the borough. Uh, but they, from what I can see, they have been particularly concentrating on the, uh, on the Furfield ward. Uh, were two of the very much uh, leading lights, uh, Peter Underwood and uh, Esther, uh, have been uh, are two of the candidates. And, you know, considering they are you know, ecologists, uh, I can tell you that I've had four pieces of uh, paper through my door over the last couple of months uh, from the Green Party, um, uh, urging me to vote for them 
uh, in the council elections. And, um, and I know that they've been uh, actually canvassing. Uh, I've seen them about with, you know, rosettes on knocking on people's doors and what have you. So they, whilst they have got a spread of candidates across the borough, they're clearly concentrating on Furfield. Now, uh, Furfield, uh, under a different boundaries, uh, was, was a Conservative ward, went to Labour after the boundary changes. Uh, but the, the Green Party seemed to be going, uh, seemed to be going after them. Now, Furfield includes a lot of uh, new flats, people who may not be registered to vote, or even if they are, may not be that interested in voting. Um, lots of people who, who live in the area for uh, six or 12 months and then move on. Uh, if the, uh, the Green Party has not an, an outside possibility here of, uh, of coming through, given the, uh, the effort they've put in, and they may actually get their, uh, their first councillor in Croydon, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to see. Yes, indeed. That, that, that will be uh, really interesting to see if that happens. I, I guess other wards to look out for. Um, Addiscum East, uh, which is currently split between uh, Labour and Conservative. I think that would be surprising if that remains split. I wouldn't like to say how that would unsplit, but, but that was quite an interesting result last time. Uh, be, be keen to see what happens there. Um, New Addington wards, I think the Conservatives are probably likely to trend towards taking uh, the New Addington, certainly New Addington South, um, less so than New Addington, more so than New Addington North uh, Ward. You would think they, they might pick up a councillor or two there. Um, and then South Croydon, there's been a lot of rumours that might go, might go Labour, um, an area that's changed quite a lot. Um, Jason Perry is running for mayor. He's also running there. Uh, could be some surprise results, Dan. Any anything you care to predict? Well, um, I, my prediction is that actually that there will be a surprise result somewhere. But I I I I feel it. Whether it's whether it's the, the Greens getting getting one or, or more in, in in Furfield, or whether it's uh, some sort of upset somewhere, as you said, with um, with with the South Croydon ward. Uh, I think there will be a little bit of a change somewhere. Probably won't make a massive difference overall to the to the makeup of the of the council in in that sense. Uh, but I think there will be one or two uh, surprises, and that 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 they may of course all come about because of of people's voting intentions. For the uh, for the mayoralty, yes, indeed, uh, it, that two sets of votes, or in fact three votes, uh, when you say first and second preference for mayor, and then and then of course actually possibly three votes for for council, we all mean people will have a chance to vote a number of different ways, and may well be that they they fancy someone for mayor and someone else in council, and that could be uh, interesting to see how that affects things. We've. Uh, uh, Interviewed Zach, uh, as we've mentioned, he's running there. We've interviewed Gavin, he's that's up on our website. Further afield, we've got a num number of people who are running in local elections that we've got interviews with. Um, SDP candidates in London, uh, uh, Reform Party candidates in um, Banstead, um, and Hampshire independence candidates, are many, uh, as well as uh, Christian Party People's Alliance candidate. Uh, Maureen Martin in Lewisham. So a number of candidates all around the place. Um, worth having a look on our website if you're interested. These are people that have bravely put themselves up. They are, by and large, probably not that likely to win. So kudos to them for doing it um, and, and good luck to them all. Uh, Dan, any final thoughts? Uh, just, I think you, know, you mentioned some people there. I think that, you know, as someone who, who stood uh, for council before and, and you know has done a lot of campaigning before and um, you know it, it's important that people do put themselves forward uh, for these positions and you know it, it's important that people do take part in the in the democratic process whether that be as candidates or as or as campaigners so you know I may uh, disagree with some some people that we've we've talked about today on on various issues but uh, but ultimately, I say, you know, good on them for uh, for standing and for for standing up for what they believe in and, and for, you know, campaigning hard and uh, 
we're now a, a few weeks away from the uh, the election and i uh, yeah i look forward to seeing what the uh, what the results are but uh, you know we've certainly got to hope that whatever the the outcome is on the uh, on may the 5th that uh, that croydon has a, a a brighter and better future than uh, than what it's had in the last couple of years uh, with the uh, the previous regime Yes, very much so. Very much so indeed. Well, uh, thank you all for listening and uh, we'll see you in the pub sometime. Cheers.